Hey guys, in this lesson we will deal with biogeographical evidences of evolution. This is presented by me, Yogita Khandelwal. Biogeographical evidences. So, biogeography uh, stands for study of distribution of animals and plants in different parts of earth. So, these are evidences based on distribution of flora and fauna in different parts of earth. Now, uh, flora stands for a group of animal, uh, group of plants present in a particular area, and fauna is distribution of animals in a particular area. So, flora for plants and fauna for animals. So, uh, the evidences of evolution based on flora distribution and flora and fauna is referred to as biogeographical evidences of evolution. Now, A. R. Wallis, that is Alfred, Alfred Rizal Wallis, classified Earth into six biogeographical realms. So, he divided the whole world into six realms on the basis of distribution of animals and plants, that is on the basis of distribution of flora and fauna. So, uh, with paleontological evidences, biogeographical evidences are the uh, strong support of organic evolution. So, they strongly support organic evolution and they are the best evidences. Biogeographical realms. So, there are six realms. First is Palearctic realm. It is the largest and it is uh, Europe and North Asia. Oriental realm, it is the part of tropical Asia. So, tropical area Asia forms oriental realm. Now, the Himalayan mountain barrier separates Palearctic and Oriental realm. So, these two realms are separated by Himalayan mountain. Then, we have Australian realm. It covers Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand and New Guinea. Ethiopian realm covers Africa. Neotropical realm, South and Central America. And Nearctic realm is North America. So, here's a world picture and uh, see this red color is the largest one we can see here. So, this is the Palearctic realm. Then here we have that is Tropical Asia's Oriental realm. Now, these two here we have Himalayan ranges. So, these two realms are separated by Himalayan ranges. Africa is covered with Ethiopian realm. Then we have this... Uh, Australian realm, then here North America is Nearctic realm and South and Central America, this Central America and South America is Neotropical realm. So, these are six biogeographical realm that was classified by A.R. Wallace. Wallace line. It is an imaginary line drawn on map in between Oriental and Australian realm. So, uh, separating the Oriental and Australian realm is an imaginary line that was drawn by Wallace. That is known as Wallace line. And it separates flora and fauna distribution of these two parts. Now, observation of distribution of flora and fauna in biogeographical realm suggest following three types of distribution. So, when we observe the distribution of animals and plants in these biogeographical realms, we can uh, see that there are three types of distribution on which uh, the flora and fauna is distributed on the earth. So, first is discontinuous distribution, restricted distribution and the continuous distribution. So, dealing them one by one, first is discontinuous distribution. Presence of similar type of flora and fauna in distinctly located places. So, in distinctly located places, we have similar type of flora and fauna and there is no similarity of flora and fauna in intervening zone. So, uh, this the intervening zone that is separating the two distinctly located places, it doesn't have that similar fauna. But the two distinctly located areas have similar type of flora and fauna that is referred to as discontinuous distribution. 
for example presence of alligators in china and usa now china is a part of asia and usa america so these are two separately different continents but they have both have alligators so this uh, that is similar fauna similarly presence of magnolias tulips and sassafras in china and asia again here flora is similar similarly presence of lung fish in australia america and africa that is in three different continents we have the same type of lung fish so that is discontinuous distribution these distinctly located areas were part of common landmass so uh, this was thought that uh, about it is believed that about 2 million years ago there was con mil two millions or we can say rather than millions of years ago there was a common landmass or a single landmass or uh, there there was no continental distribution so this there was single landmass from which these continents are derived that is known as pangnea so there was a common landmass continental drift caused separation of landmass and distribution of similar type of flora and fauna in distinctly located areas so from that common landmass the continents were derived that there was a continental drift and this leads to distribution of similar type of flora and fauna in distinctly located areas because they were derived from common landmass the geographical isolation was followed by mutation which caused origin of new species since there was geographical isolation there was continental drift so it was followed by mutation and there was origin of new species and this is an evidence of divergent evolution since because they, we have a similar type of flora and fauna in distinctly located areas because they were present in a common landmass some years ago and since they have common ancestors so it is an evidence of divergent evolution that leads to origin of new species restricted distribution presence of typical flora and fauna in localized part of earth so there is a typical flora and fauna to a part of earth that is not present anywhere else for example is presence of prototherian and metatherian mammals in australian realm prototherians are egg laying mammals and metatherians are marsupials uh, and it is because of absence of fierce competition from carnivorous placental mammals that which increase survival of prototherian and metatherian so what happened uh, before uh, continental drift between asia and australia they were together and as the prototherians evolved from reptiles uh, the both continents were joined but as the continental drift occurred and both got separated and then in the asia eutherian mammals evolved now since eutherian were carnivorous so the prototherian and metatherian in asia was overridden by placental mammals but in australia since it was separated so uh, the prototherians and metatherians evolved because there was absence of eutherian mammals there now the continuous distribution presence of common type of flora and fauna in continents which recently joined because of continental drift for example south america consist of mammals resembling horse hippopotamus bear rabbit etc now due to continental drift south america joined north america so initially these were two distinct places but uh, because of continental drift they joined and these animals that were present in south america were overridden by north america fauna so that's all for this lesson thanks for watching